Good evening, people of God. May God bless you abundantly, and let's start a blessed week together. In a few moments, not yet, but in a few moments, I'm going to play a song, and while we play this song, I'm going to ask you to do something. While we do that, or before we do that, rather, I would like to read with you a couple of verses from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 23, starting from verse 21. God's Word tells us, When you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay to pay it, for the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and it would be sin to you. But if you abstain from vowing, it shall not be sin to you. That which has gone from your lips you shall keep and perform, for you voluntarily vowed to the Lord your God what you have promised with your mouth. When we make a vow with God, this is something very solemn. It should be something very solemn. A perfect example of a solemn vow is the solemn vow of marriage. The moment that a man and a woman exchange their vows on the altar, in that moment, they are making that bond between both of them and, and God. God is there in the center, witnessing and being part of that vow. But at the same time, when you come before the altar to say a prayer, when you lay your hands on the altar and you pray and you talk to God, you're making a vow. When you take part of the Lord's Supper and you say, Lord, I will never again return to my sin, you are making a vow and that vow must not be broken. It must be honored instead. We were explaining on Sunday in our services all over the country, in fact, all over the world, the importance of not making a vow of fools. What is a vow of fools? It's someone vowing to do something or to, to perform something, but they know deep down that they're not really going to do it. And one of the things that it's very sad to see is that a lot of people over the, over the years, who knows, years, have accumulated envelopes of vows in their house, in a drawer, inside the Bible, and this is a sign of spiritual coldness. If a person makes a vow and breaks that vow and they're okay with that, it shows that their relationship with God is not well. And if you have some kind of uh, fear for the things of God, and if you haven't fulfilled vows, there is a chance you feel guilty, there's a chance you feel heavy. And in order for you to, to have a clean slate, we are inviting everyone this Sunday to bring their unfulfilled vows inside of one of those blue envelopes that, say, that says, I love Jesus. And together with those empty envelopes that you've accumulated, you can bring an offering to help support the work of the church. In fact, we are asking for this offering specifically for Liberty Radio and the media work of the church. In fact, some Wednesday when you come to the church, we'll talk to you more in the service about the media work of the church. So, but it's not enough to fulfill the vows. It is important that from this moment onwards, you never again say something or make a vow that you know you are not going to fulfill. But let this Sunday be the Sunday where you will have a clean slate with God, and you will fulfill your vows like we read there 
in the Bible. Now, we're going to play a song right now. And I would like you, while this song is playing, I would like to invite you to do something. Send a message. Now, usually I say, oh, contact assistants, members of the church and so on. But instead, I'm telling you, send a message tonight while the song is playing to someone who used to be in the church with you and they're not now. Send a message to them now on Instagram, how do you call it? Instagram Di direct, direct. Message. direct message. Okay, Instagram direct messages on Telegram, WhatsApp, uh, Facebook Messenger. Send a message to that person now while the song plays, right now. And tell them that I would like to speak to them. Send a message to them now and say, listen, Bishop James wants to speak to you right now. Do it. Sometimes, Pastor Joseph, we do things like this and we have people who come back to us and say, ah, Pastor, Bishop, when you did that thing on the radio, you know, my friend who hadn't been coming to the church for a while, they connected and they came. Sometimes we do, you do not despise little actions of faith like this because who knows if that person will connect with us and this will be a lifeline for them. But send them a message now during this song and tell them that I am waiting here to speak to them. When the, when the song is over, I will be speaking to that person and to you as well. Let's listen to this song together. Send a message while the song is playing. We'll be back in just a moment to talk to all of you.
Welcome back. Well, I would like to speak right now to all of those who are connected. And I'm here in the studio tonight, joined by Pastor Michael Osei and Pastor Joseph. And on Sunday, we will have the Sunday of Forgiveness. And I was meditating on something today. How many people, they crave to be close to God, to return to the house of God. People who were once united with us, serving God, evangelizing with us. And for some reason, they walked away from the presence of God, but they want to come back. But they struggle with thoughts. Not that God can't forgive them, but maybe their fight is for them to forgive themselves. And as I was meditating on this, I remembered the situation, the case of the prodigal son, but in a very specific way. There's a very specific part you may not have noticed, but you will understand in a different way. Look what the Bible says in the book of Luke, chapter 15, verse 18. I will arise, this is what the prodigal son said, I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. Notice that he didn't say this to his father. He was among the, the squalor of where he chose to end, a, to end up. And he was thinking to himself, these words we read, Father, I, I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. He didn't say that. He was thinking about this. There was a battle going on in his mind. He wanted to come back to his father's house, but he thought he would be turned away. And when we speak to people, who return to the, to the house of God and we say, well, we missed you. Where have you been? And how many times, Pastor Michael, we hear people say like this, Pastor, Bishop, I, I've been wanting to come back to the presence of God for so long. I haven't been happy. I, I miss my brothers and sisters of faith. I miss the environment of faith. I miss the altar. I miss God. But I, I, I couldn't bring myself to do this. I've, I felt like I would be judged. So these thoughts that the prodigal son had, if I go back to my father's house, maybe I can be accepted as a, a hired servant. I imagine how many people, Pastor Michael, right now are watching us, people who connected with us because someone told them, Bishop James wants to speak to you and they want to come back. But these thoughts, like with the prodigal son, they are affecting them. The person, many times maybe they were about to leave their house, they put their hand on the doorknob, about to leave their house, but then they turn back because they thought, what if I go there and everybody judges me? And actually, if the person comes back, everybody will notice them, but will notice them because they are joyful. Like, like all these things that were going through the head of the, the, the prodigal son were far from reality because when he arrived at his father's house, the father didn't despise him, the father celebrated. In the same way, those who think, if I return to the presence of God, I will be judged, I will be uh, ridiculed, I'll be exposed. It's the opposite. Just like with the prodigal son was the opposite, here is also the opposite. We want to, our arms are open to welcome this person back. Because Bishop, it makes absolutely no sense for that person to return and for us to ridicule them or for us to make them feel uncomfortable because it cancels the whole work we're trying to do. We're trying to save, we're trying to help. But even reading the verse as well, it, it shows that what the son had in his head was completely different from what the, the father opposite. had in his head. It was head. a lie of the devil. Exactly. That's the whole point. The devil made a monster in his head that didn't really exist, created a monster that didn't exist. Exactly. The father in his head was ready to take him back as a son. 
and every time a person is held back from coming this person who especially has tuned in today for this those ideas that are holding them from coming back it's not the idea of god it's as simple as god's idea is to welcome them back and to welcome them back to make them a son to make them a child that's why the sunday is a sunday of forgiveness because that forgiveness is available yeah and and maybe pastor michael this person believes that god can forgive them but they until today have not been able to to forgive themselves they think what i did against god what i did against uh, i don't know whoever you have offended you feel you have offended maybe you think i don't deserve i'm not worthy of forgiveness but just the fact that you think you are not worthy of forgiveness is already a sign that you have repented of that, that you don't want that life anymore. And, and, and Sunday is for people like you. The, the church, Pastor Joseph, is not for perfect people. The church is for broken people. The church is for sinners. The church is for criminals. The church is for uh, people that the world has rejected. But then again, the Lord Jesus was also someone that the world rejected. And far be it from me to compare us to Jesus. Jesus is perfect and we are not. But when a person feels undeserving, unworthy, that is already a sign that they've had enough of that life. And if they just come to God, that can be the beginning. Because as long, when a person starts to say, what have I done? When you say what have I done is because you realized you made a mistake. And that's the beginning of change. That can be the beginning now in the Sunday of forgiveness. All of us have committed a lot of mistakes. And none of us were condemned when we came to church. And this person that for sure stayed there condemned themselves, self-condemnation, thinking because they have done many things. But that's not a reason for God that you hate the person, for God doesn't want to see that person anymore. Because... As the Father, God wants to celebrate. And what makes God to celebrate is to see the person enter through the UCKG. Mm -hmm. It's come through the door. It's to come there. Maybe come. I know that sometimes a person may come with their face down or anything. But I, be, I believe that the person is not going to live in the same way. Not because the mercy of God never ends. Mm -hmm. That man, that uh, prodigal son, he was there thinking that he could come back to be a servant. You know, sometimes, Pastor Joseph, uh, people think like this. If I go to the church, everyone will surround me. You're right. <laughs> but not for the reason that you think. Everyone will surround you because they'll be ecstatic to see you back. They will want to hug you. They're not going to be asking you where you've been. They're going to say, welcome back. <laughs> so the idea... That if you return to the presence of God after the service, everyone will come and, 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 and want to speak to you. You're right. Just not for the reason you think, but because they love you and they want to celebrate the fact that you're back. I want to talk to you that you've given up on yourself. You've given up on your future. You say, Bishop, I've, I've been baptized different times in the church. I made vows that I broke in the church. I left the presence of God. Is there hope for me? If you're watching this program right now, whether live with us now at this time or afterwards, if you're watching this program, it's because you have a chance. This program is like God saying, here I am speaking to you. You have a chance. This Sunday, the Sunday of forgiveness. And you who are watching us now, who are you are a member of the church, a soul winner, a soul raiser then allow God to use you to bring the prodigal son or daughter, the prodigal daughter that may be suffering, that wants to come back but is embarrassed. Maybe that person who portrayed the fake life of happiness on social media, but that person is unhappy. But that person needs this forgiveness. Allow yourself to be used as an instrument in the house of God or, or, or in the hands of God. And you, friend, who like the prodigal son, you have all these thoughts, these monsters, these monsters in your mind telling you that 
you will be judged. God doesn't want you. God can't forgive you. That you blasphemed. All these things. The only way to slay these monsters, Pastor Michael, the only way to slay these monsters is, is to be on Sunday in the Sunday of Forgiveness. Bishop, <clears throat> you know, it's it, the, this person listening to us, whether they're in the church, a member, and they, they, they haven't been taking their relationship with God seriously, or whether they're this person that tuned in to listen, especially to what you had to say to them. You know, actually, they should be excited because they know the value of losing. And when you lose something and you have an opportunity to get it back, you tend to give more value to it. Mm -hmm. And so this person knows what it means to be with and without God. This person knows what it, you, you know what it means to be, you know, at peace and then now without peace. So when you get the opportunity to get this peace back, which this Sunday is for that, when you get the opportunity to get God back because his hands are open and the church, our hands are open, then that means you have the opportunity to break through even more because you know exactly what you need to do. You know, I, we were talking here and I just remember the very, very beautiful Bible verse. The Bible says, to whom much is forgiven, that person loves much. But to whom little is forgiven, they love little. If you say, Bishop, I don't deserve, I'm so, I'm so hopeless, so lost. I don't deserve, I, I, I'm the least deserving person on the face of the planet. Okay, so you know that you need a lot of forgiveness. That's good because you're going to love him much and you will never leave him again. I don't know if you can understand this Bible verse. No, 100%. Sure. <laughs> Bishop, can I sh read one? Mm -hmm. uh, the, the Bible says in Jeremiah 1, uh, 3, 1 says, They say, if a man divorces his wife and, and she goes from him and become another man's wife, may he return to her again? Would not that land be greatly polluted? But you have Play the hallowed with many lovers, yet return mm -hmm. to me, says the Lord. Very nice. Very powerful. Even those who played the harlot with so much sin, so many things, God says, return to me. That's all he wants. Listen, just focus on one thing that God wants from you. You, church member, tell that person that you're going to speak to this week. Tell them this. Just focus on one thing. God says to you, to all of us, to those, who are, to those who are far from Him. He says, return to me. That's all you need to do. Make your way on Sunday to enter through the church. Bishop, what will happen if I enter through the church? Don't worry about the rest. Just, just return to Him. And the rest He will do. And I want to pray here right now for those who want to return to the presence of God, but they don't have the strength. Maybe you are that person. Maybe you got to the point that you got on the bus, you got off the bus in front of the church, but you didn't have the strength to enter the church. You, you got back on the bus, you came back. Maybe you walked to the church, halfway to the church, you turned back. It's for you that I want to pray. And if you say, no, Bishop, thank God I'm in His presence. Pray for someone who maybe is in this situation and go after this person. Go after that person. Be an instrument in God's hands and go after that person. Let me pray. Let us pray together here for you who want to return, but what you need is the strength to come back. Oh, my Lord, great is your mercy. But you said, seek the Lord while he may be found. And in this Sunday of forgiveness, you are telling those who want, those who want, you are telling them, return to me. Even if you played the harlot, 
return to me. Maybe this person doesn't feel they are deserving or worthy of coming back to your presence, but you are saying to them, return to me. They don't have to worry about how they will pray on Sunday, what will be said on Sunday. All they need to focus is returning to, is to return to you. My God, if this person didn't have the strength, the courage to face coming to your presence, to your house again, give them this strength right now. The fact that they are listening to this program is already a sign, a God-given sign that you didn't forget about them, you didn't reject them, you didn't reject them completely. You, you are giving them another opportunity. That's how great and perfect and loving our God is. Hallelujah. So strengthen this person who for months, who knows for years, has wanted to return to your presence, but they don't find the courage to do so. This person who thought wrongly that they would be judged, accused, ridiculed, but instead they are brothers and sisters of the same faith that are just waiting to see their faith walking through the doors of the universal church of the kingdom of God once again so that they can run to them and embrace them. Ah, what a joy it will be this Sunday. What a joy it will be this Sunday where all over this country, wherever there is a UCKG, there will be celebrations of those who will return to the presence of God. My Lord, I already believe that you have instilled in this person the necessary strength for them to go ahead and take the step to return to your house. In Jesus' name, Amen. Praise God. Amen. I want to read a message here that someone wrote in the chat. Elsa from Ipswich said, That's true, Bishop. When I left the presence of God, I suffered a lot. After returning to the church, I received all the support from the assistants and the pastors. And now, thanks to God, I am strong in my faith and serving my Lord. <laughs> Amen, Elsa from Ipswich. What a blessing. You see, she wanted to come back but had all these internal battles. But what she found was the help that she needed. If you're suffering, if you're far from the presence of God, this Sunday is for you. If you are in the presence of God, this Sunday is for you as well. But don't come empty-handed. Bring someone who's far from God hand in hand with you. And reminding everyone that this Friday at 10 p.m. we will have the night vigil of the pearl. Wherever you are, this night vigil is absolutely necessary for the upkeep of our faith. We'll see you again tomorrow here at the same time. Don't miss Be Inspired. Every night we are together here to, like the primitive church, we, we, we don't have to gather in a cave. We can gather here. This Liberty Radio is like our cave, our space where we can meditate on the Word of God. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow at the same time. Bye-bye. strength has gone away I fought with everything I had my miracle is yet to be seen I raised my cry up to you I've been told this is my end, but I look to you, 
I look to you, Lord. I've been told this is my end, but I look to you. I look to you, my Lord, just a little bit longer that the tears will fall, just a little bit longer and the night will be over and my Lord and my Lord very soon will return just a little bit longer that the tears will fall just a little bit longer and the night will be my end, but I look to you, I look to you, my Lord, I've been told this is my end, but I look to you, I look to you, my Lord, just a little bit longer, let the tears will fall just a little bit longer and the night will be over and my Lord and my Lord very soon will return just a little bit longer that the tears will fall a little bit longer and the night will be over and my Lord and my Lord will return just a little bit longer that the tears will fall just a little bit longer and the night will be and my Lord, and my Lord, very soon will return. Just a little bit longer that the tears will fall. Just a little bit longer and the night will be over. And my 